In this video we will create a timer that indicates when the crate will open on an oil rig after it has been activated. Timer is generally set to 15 minutes which is how we will configure this one. However it is easy to adjust the duration if needed. The components required are one small rechargeable battery, 10 electrical branches, one blocker, two timers, one OR switch and two XOR switches. All these require a level one workbench. A level two workbench are required for two counters and one RF receiver. The crafting costs for these are five high quality metal and 1,575 metal frags. Right, I'll start by putting the battery down the RF receiver and then two batteries. I'm going to set this to 500 so we can see how this works. But the frequencies we'd need for the small oil rig are 4765 and a large oil rig would be 4768. I'll we'll just put this in just here. And I'll uh, wire this up to the battery. Then link this one to the next one. Right, now this we'd set to two, and this one would be just the same. Right, now we're going to change the black and wire this to the receiver. Right, now we're going to put in an XOR switch. And then a timer above that. Right, we're going to change the colour to red and take it from the uh, branch. And we're going to put this straight into the timer. We're going to set this to 900, which is 900 seconds uh, for 15 minutes. Right, from the left-hand side, we'll change the colour to blue and put that down and into the left-hand side of the XOR switch. Right, we're then going to put in three branches. And we're going to wire all these into the timer using a red wire. Then from the right hand side of this one, we go along to the next branch. And again on the second to the third. Now the first one needs to be set to one. Second one's to one, and a third one to three. Right, then we're going to change the colour to black, and then we're going to connect the RF receiver up to the toggle on the timer. Just make sure this is nice and tidy, or as tidy as we can get it. And straight into the toggle on. Now, from the first of these branches, we're going to take it from the left hand side, so we're going to make the colour per pink. And that's going to go down to the right hand side of the XOR switch. Right, above the second branch, we are going to put an XOR switch. And for the left hand side of this, we're going to change the colour to purple and take that straight up to the input of A. Right, the next bit we're going to be doing is uh, the displays. So we'll put a branch in down here, followed by two counters. Uh, another branch up directly above the counter there, and then we're going to put in a all switch just here. Right, and then we're going to put a branch up here, followed by a blocker, another timer, and then an electrical branch directly above it. Right, we need to put a branch in there. I think that's all electrics, components. Right, now we'll wire the rest up. 
Right, we're just going to confirm that's three. And then from the left hand side, we're going to change the color to blue. And this is going to go all the way down to where our uh, counters are. So slightly over to the left, maybe. Plus that goes into the first of the branches there. And that's set to one. And then from the right hand side, changing the color to red. That'll go along to the next branch along. And again, we set that to one. And then from there, this goes all the way along to the power in on the timer. Then the left hand side, which we're going to change to yellow. That goes to the input on the blocker. And then from the output on the blocker, that goes to the toggle of the timer. And then from the output of the, the timer, that goes up to the branch above. Right, I mean, you set this to one. And then from the right hand side of this, we go all the way along to the XOR switch and put it into input B. And then from the left hand side, after we change it to green, we're going to take this down to the block on the blocker. And try and make this just fairly tidy, be a bit closer. Right, that's that done. Right, now from here, we're going to take the power out of the XOR switch here and go all the way down to the increment on the right hand side counter, which is the top of the three. That goes into there. We're now going to go over to the XOR switch here and we're going to change this color to blue. And this will go across to the next branch. This will set to one. And then from the left hand side of this, which we're going to change to yellow. This is going to go across and into the clear on the first counter. I'll just try and line this wire up. which is the bottom of the, the three connectors on the side of it. Right, and then from the right hand side, which we're going to change this to blue. We're going to take this all the way across and we're going to put into the input A on the OR switch. Right, and then from at the output of this, we're then going to put this into the clear on the Se second counter, which is the bottom of the three. Right, now we're going to take it from, we're going to just make sure this is set to one. And then for the right hand side of this, we're going to take this along, which is going to be the power to the counters. So this one is going to go all the way along to the second of the counters. and put into the input. And then the left hand side, which we're going to change to pink, is going to go into the first counter on the power in. Right, now from the second counter, we'll change this to cyan. This goes straight up to the branch. We're just going to verify that this is set to one. And then from the right hand side, we're going to go across and down and put it into the input B on the OR switch. And then for the right hand side, we're going to take this down and we're going to put it into the increment of the first counter. Right, I think that's all the wiring done. So uh, now we'll uh, equip our transmitter and just test it. So oh, this needs to be set to one, that's in one second. And just to verify, that's set to 900. Right, we'll just uh, 
There we go, and you can see the timer going. Ah, right, there is one more thing we can do. You can see that the second counter is set to the default of 10, so we need to just disconnect the power to reset that. And we're gonna go in and change the value to 60, 60 seconds for one minute. And then we're gonna reconnect the power. And then we're gonna try it again. And now it should count to 60 and then flick over to the next minute. And this should go up to 15 minutes. Now you could add uh, signs and flashing lights to let you know what's happening, or though I personally think the clicking from the timer is enough to notify you that something's going on. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Perhaps leave a comment or give me some advice on the next one to do, or maybe upgrade this. I've left the link to the Rustrition diagram for this in the description. We just have a few more seconds before the first counter flicks over to show one minute gone and the other one should go to zero there we go all sorted and thank you for watching